Hello and welcome. My name is Lyndon Leete from Go Rhino, and we are here with Jeff from ADEC, and we're going to go over some of the features and benefits of the ADEC prisoner seat for installation. So without further ado, Jeff, go ahead and take the floor. Oh, thank you for having me. We're going to take kind of a 10,000 foot view today on installing the seat. The first thing you want to do is get the OEM seat out, and uh, depending whether you're going to put in a factory belt or a center belt, whether or not we have to strip back the C pillars. Um, if we're doing a factory belt, we're going to leave the OEM seat belt in place. And as we go along here, our buckles are going to be up on top of the seat in the center using the factory seat belt. If we're doing a, a center belt, our centers are, our belts are going to originate out the center. And we're going to put a buckle in the OEM position where the shoulder hoop goes. So we're going to need to access that C pillar. Um, on the floor, we're going to run a, a belt through the seat and we're going to go right back with the OEM bolt in the OEM position. Our goal is always try to get back to the OEM position so that everything is secured and, and rated like it was from the factory. Um, so again, center belt. Belts are originating out of the center of the vehicle, coming up through the seat. If we're doing a factory belt, there will be a bracket that we're going to install that's going to protrude up through the seat and our buckles are going to attach to that with like an eight inch wand that makes it easier for the officer to find the buckle. Um, as, we're, as we're disassembling the car, on the front of the seat, you'll have four studs and four bolts. Our positioning, you're going to have two pre-drilled holes. Those go to the outside two studs where those were located. Those studs are able to be removed on a Ford SUV by either having a female torques or just take a pair of vice grips and they'll walk right back out of the threaded insert. And then our new 12 millimeter bolt is, or 10 millimeter bolt is going to go right into that insert. <clears throat> uh, sometimes there's some confusion because you have a, a hole with a stud in it and a hole with a bolt in it. We always want to go back to the one that had the stud in it. Um, if we don't, what happens is we end up with a gap down along the door seal trim. It doesn't let the seat come all the way back into position to seal that off so that contraband in that can't be hidden. Um, so as, as we're positioning the seat, we know where we're, we've marked where we're going to put our bolts back in. Um, we've, gone, we've got all of our brackets in the back. There will be a seat stand. There will also be two brackets that go back to the OEM studs and then come up. And if we're doing a factory belt, that bracket will protrude through the seat. If we're doing a center belt, we're going to keep it below the seat. And that way, the only thing extended beyond the seat is the belts, which are soft and pliable, which makes it uh, less opportunity for somebody to get hurt um, if they have a prisoner back there thrashing around or something. Um, in our seat stand, you'll find when you're bolting it to the floor, there's a, there's a, a split in it. And that's so that the OEM wire harness that goes down underneath the seat can be pushed up through that slot and we're not running it around the seat, we're running it through the middle of the seat stand, which will put less stress on it. Um, once that seat stands in place and we've got the seat forward um, and we put our brackets in place, we're going to put our seat in, we're going to lean it forward against the partition, feed the belts through the slot and fasten our bolts down underneath, underneath the seat and again, everything's below, and then drop the seat back into place. Um, and that'll make it look just like you see here. Uh, one of the things that we've changed in 16 is we've added magnets as a standard option. Um, and we've color-coded your shoulder belt and your lap belt. So your lap belt is always black handled, and our shoulder belt is always red handled, and in case of confusion or you got a customer thrashing around back here, the officer always knows that the red goes to the shoulder and the black always goes to the waist. By adding the magnets, we've eliminated the black clips that we've used in the past and that allows the buckle and, or the handles to be placed on any of the metal part of the partition. Um, keeping them on the outside by the door so he's not having to reach in over the officer and exposing himself to any kind of risk or harm. Um, so that's a new thing. When you get these, there will be a small hole in the handle retainer, and we're going to provide you with a magnet, a eight by half screw, and it just 
Don't use a screw gun, put it in by hand, it just snugly goes into place. Uh, sometimes with a screw gun you're going too hard and strip it out and that's, that's not a good thing obviously. Um, if we're doing a fact or a center belt, excuse me, again this buckle is going to go up where the center hoop goes and we're going to put all the hardware back in place just like we took it apart except we're going to replace the shoulder hoop with a buckle and strap. Um, from there, we're getting down and then we've got our seat nestled in, we've got our seat belt protruding up through. We're going to get our, our seat kind of in position and get our front two bolts started. Don't tighten them quite up all the way. The rest of the seat should nestle right up against the seat pillar trim. Then we can push it in the back. We provide you with some self-tapping screws. Um, in this case, we've got three, so just kind of centered and maybe two, three inches from the outside, and that, that fastens it to the seat stand. Then come back, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then tighten up your, your front two bolts. Again, they don't have to be cranked down to the floor just good and snug, and all they're doing is holding that seat in position. Um, you can over flex the plastic if you try and torque it back to the, back to the floor. All of our seats are made out of TPO. They can be wiped and cleaned. Um, you know, when you first do them, a little bit of glass clean or something like that works great, but down the road, your department can use the detergents or bleaches, and it's not going to degrade the plastic. Um, the TPO we use has got great UV. It's not going to get brittle or chip or mar. If you were to hit it with a sledgehammer, it would just blush. You'd get a white spot, but it won't crack. It won't split. Uh, so. You get excellent longevity out of these things, great UV, and again, the cleaners and detergents aren't going to degrade the plastic. Um, now, what's what are some options for the car, cargo area protection? Cargo area with the seat. protection. Our standard, if you ordered our 1311 kit, is going to come with the seat, the seat belt kit, center belt, and it's going to come with a mesh uh, laser cut rear screen. What that's going to do is allow the prisoner not to get to the rear cargo area, but it is going to allow airflow through the area. Um, in some areas of the country, that's important. The, the departments want the airflow, they want air conditioning, they want things flowing. If you're in an area where that's not important and you want to seal this up so nobody can push any contraband or anything through the screen or what have you to the back area, we offer, on a 1311 kit, you can order a polycarbonate upgrade which can be pop riveted in before or after to that, to that screen and seals off that area. Uh, we also now offer a no mesh screen, which is still the metal perimeter of the, of the screen. So all of your attaching hardware, everything else works exactly the same, but there's no mesh and we pop rivet in a, a clear polycarbonate. Uh, some departments want no obstructions. They want that to be just a clear polycarbonate uh, cover so we offer the no mesh now okay and we can do that in a Ford or in a Tahoe um, on both ways we can do a mesh and polycarbonate or we can do no mesh and polycarbonate now there's also an option if you already have the mesh installed on either the Tahoe or the Explorer or a uh, utility um, there is a polycarbonate upgrade correct Jeff the, yes that's the yeah. polycarbonate over the mesh and that can be solved when you're assembling the car from the scratch or you, after the car is assembled, it can be operated in place without disassembling the vehicle. So it's basically an overlay on, on top of the mesh, um, which is a plastic polycarbonate. So it saves you some dollars in installation and, and money um, instead of going with a, a full replacement. So, and then along with, uh, to reinforce that, um, does it come with any other reinforcement brackets? Um, on our screen, we got whether it's a Ford or a Tahoe, there's two roof brackets that go back toward the rain gutter. Um, our thought process is we are trying to optimize that cube behind the seat for a storage unit, um, all your ammo, your guns, keep it protected, but optimize that space. Um, our goal on our rear struts that come off the seat stand is to keep them as, as pushed outbound in the vehicle as we can, again, so that there's the maximum amount of width for the vault or, or storage. So that's a basic run through of the ADEC prisoner seat on installation. Feel free to visit us on our website, which is gorhinopd.com. You can contact us with any questions, inquiries, or quotes. 
You can also reference adec.com and reference any of the pictures and install guides there. You can also view our video on our website, which I do a basic run through of how to use the prisoner seat belts and features and benefits. So again, thank you for joining us. My name is Lyndon Leite from Go Rhino. I'm Jeff, Jeff Lowry from ADAC. Thank you. And we'll see you soon.